welcome you all to this evening reception organized in connection with the presentation of Ethiopia's candidate, Professor Eot Waldemaria, for the position of AU Commissioner for Education, Science, Technology, and Innovation. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Ethiopia has a long history of unwavering commitment towards promoting multilateral engagements in all issues of great regional and global importance. It goes without saying that education, science, technology and innovation are among these issues that are critical to the progress and the advancement of our continent. They are indeed critical nevertheless to ensure the implementation of Agenda 2063 and the Sustainable Development Goals. There is no doubt that in order to address our development challenges, we need to develop appropriate technologies, technological policies and strategies that would enable our gaining use to have access to technology and innovation opportunities in science fields with the aim to supply markets, entrepreneurs, and skilled labor force in digital sectors. We have the conviction that the Commission has a key role to play in helping the implementation of African Continental Free Trade Agreement, thereby strengthening intra-African trade and better integrate the continent into international markets supported by technological innovations. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is in this broad context and spirit of serving our continent that Ethiopia presented Professor Ruth Odemare, whose proven leadership qualities, skills, and competence make her an ideal fit to this important position. She has a rich experience in the portfolio as academician, as a scientist, as a leader, as a reformer, and as a member of public diplomacy group. I believe her qualities and experiences so far make her the best fit not only to lead the country, but to use it to serve the advancement of our continent. She has, she has spent her life breaking invisible glass ceilings and achieving numerous first as a pioneer woman in leadership and holding highest academic rank. She has started leadership with a good track record of achievements at the Saba University, exceeding in the domain of academic leadership in progressively increasing positions of responsibilities from department chair, associate vice president to vice president of Addis Ababa University, Ethiopia's oldest premier higher education institute in Ethiopia. I had no heroes first when I was a minister of education and she was a vice president of Addis Ababa University and could witness her being a quick learner, change maker, passionate and dedicated to her goal and having to work under pressure. She has proven being multitasking and succeeding in all platforms, engaged in international research networks and published about three dozen peer-reviewed articles in international academic journals on a range of subjects. She has become the first woman full professor in the area of humanities and social science at the Addis Ababa University. Congratulations. <laughs> then, considering her great performance, we have appointed her to serve as a cabinet member in the government system. She has served in two cabinets as a minister in three different ministerial portfolios. 
Minister of Culture and Tourism, Minister of Labor and Social Affairs, Minister of Science and Higher Education. She was actually a founding member of the Minister of Science and Higher Education. Higher Education and initiated and implemented important reform programs and currently serving as Minister, advisor to the Prime Minister responsible for social sector. We are convinced that given her long years of nation, national service in diverse ministerial portfolios and multilateral exposure to the mandate of the Commission, she is best suited to lead this important and prominent organ of the African Union and deliver the results we, we all are expecting from the, from the post. We are indeed confident that her great deal of leadership and managerial experience with the required ex expertise that she has acquired over the years in the field of education, science, technology and innovation will be a great asset and added value to effectively discharge our duties assigned to the post. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, being a founding member of our prestigious institutions, OAU, AU, and hosting the institutions in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia has never got the opportunity to take part in a high position. Ethiopia has presented an eminently qualified full professor candidate endowed with rich experience in the portfolio as an instructor, researcher, publisher, leader, and creating networks. In closing, I would like to reiterate once again our request for the support of candidate Professor Hirut. I have known Professor Hirut Gundemare for quite a while now and had the opportunity to follow her professional career over the years. We had our first interaction while I was serving as the Vice President for Graduate Studies and Research of Addis Ababa University. She was then Department Head of Linguistics and Philology. At the time, she was one of the few female academic staff serving as head of the department, and in that capacity, she contributed significantly to the special machine of the university, which was focusing on capacity building of emerging public universities, that is training their junior staff at secondary and tertiary degree levels. Mindful of the potential in her, the university top management, in which I was a member, appointed her as an associate vice president for academic affairs. And later, she was promoted to vice president for international affairs. The young female then, who spearheaded the capacity building of her department, seized the opportunity provided by the position she held to contribute towards the university's vision, aspiring to be one of the top 10 Eminent African Graduate and Research University. Down the line, recognizing her leadership capacity, she was appointed by the government as Minister of Ministry of Culture and Tourism. Here also, it is my understanding that she played a pivotal role in reforming the ministry. And today, it is one of the vibrant ministries in the country, outreaching not only locally also regionally and internationally. As one, as, as an elected president of the Ethiopian Academy of Sciences, I had a number of opportunities to work with Professor Hirut Uldamare. Climbing up the ladder in 2018, Professor Hirut Uldamare was appointed as the Minister of a newly founded ministry, Minister of Science and Higher Education responsible for science, higher education, and the TBT. She led the establishment of the new university by mobilizing and galvanizing the human capital within the country and the diaspora. She led the reform of the universities she mentioned earlier, as well as 
public as well as private, including TVG centers, which are over 1,600. Together with her ministry, the Kepan Academy of Sciences has worked and is working on critical issues like quality of higher education, responsible conduct of research, promoting science culture, setting laboratory standards, evaluation and accreditation of scientific journals, etc. Over the years, I have observed leadership qualities in Professor Hirut, and she impresses me the way I understand her, the way I know her, with the following attributes. A visionary and a strategic leader, passionately owning the vision of her organization and applying participatory leadership and all authoritative leadership to get it achieved. She delegates authority and responsibility as required. She's an effective communicator. She has the capacity for mobilizing and judiciously utilizing resources. She's respectful, grateful, and appreciates and rewards the contribution of others. She has the capacity to grasp new ideas and the desire to always learn, to listen to others, and keeps abreast with the development and means futuristic. She's motivated, self-confident, and has that mindset that can be done. She's courageous, handled a number of challenges that I know, risks, and testing situations. She's strong and decisive, but also humble, as you can see in the portrait display. By bringing women like Professor Hirut Wardamara to the forefront, we'll be able to be seen in Africa in the world. I'm sure she will be elected, and I'm confident that Professor Hirut Wardamara will move Jisa, Continental Education Strategy for Africa, and STISTA 2024 Science Technology Innovation Strategy for Africa, a step forward. I wish Professor Hirut all success in her new endeavor, and you have my vote. <laughs>
of the very important recommendations, including action plans. So this is probably going to be your first task when you assume the office, and I hope you won't. Finally, she has been first in so many respects, but I think uh, one first task remains, that's to be the first Ethiopian to be a new commissioner. Excellencies Ministers, Excellencies Ambassadors, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. I'm humbled and honored to get this opportunity today to share my vision for Education Science, Technology, Innovation Commission of African Union as Ethiopian candidate. I'm very much proud of myself and tell you how I believe that my past life so far, my life journey so far, has already prepared me very well, to fit very well to this particular portfolio. My fellow African diplomats, as you are well aware of, our Africa, which is the second largest continent in the planet, our Africa, which is covering about one-fifth of the total land surface of our Earth. Our Africa that has the largest, youngest population in the planet. And our Africa that holds geopolitically very strategic position in the globe. Now, our Africa, which is the origin of humankind, and origin of ancient civilizations doesn't deserve where the continent is today. It doesn't deserve, I mean, actually it deserves a much better position globally. And African citizens deserve a better life quality than they have today. And I strongly believe that the Commission for education, science, technology, innovation is a key, critical, instrumental center to advance Africa, to lead our Africa to its destination. Africa we want, I mean, as it's clearly stated in the Agenda 2063 aspiration, the Africa we want, the prosperous Africa, peaceful Africa, integrated Africa, and globally influential Africa can be achieved only if we work on the next generation, on our youth, which is, as I said earlier, the largest population of the continent. How do we work? Through quality education, through Africa-relevant education, through Africa relevant science, technology, innovation. So we have to foster and nurture technology and innovation that really solves African problem for Africans. We need a kind of technology that can improve our way of life. Now, most of the things that we are doing are manual. Sorry to say it. Manual. And our economy is you know going up and down because it's not based on knowledge it's not knowledge based economy it's not technology based economy that we know we have so it's not sustainable enough as the way it should be so our education science technology should address this on only this how do we do that i have priority areas that i identified apart from the general vision one is African universities and schools need to be revitalized, to be reformed. There is a need for huge reform. First of all, the ecosystem, ecosystem of education, science, technology, and innovation 
should involve all the relevant stakeholders, the private sector, the industry, the community, and the civil society, they should take part so that they can ensure the relevance of the education we have. And of course, digitization, digital technology needs to be, <laughs> should be natural skill in this time. COVID has given us a, a, a serious lesson that our kids had to stay at home, disconnected from their lessons, while the rest of the world was continuing education with you know, online and other technology modalities. So we have to rethink this traditional way of teaching learning. It doesn't take us anywhere because lots of unpredictabilities in the future, man-made and nature-made, like COVID. So another important point, important agenda item that I would like to embark on if I get elected is inculcating Pan-Africanism, inculcating Pan-Africanism, how? Schools and universities should be places for Pan-African values and ideals to be developed, for our kids to have Pan-African identities along the way. So it should be part of the curriculum, right from the elementary school. We should know who we are. We should know each other very well. And we should cherish our African values and identities if we have to integrate as a continent. That's, you know, uh, what is stated in the uh, Agenda 2063's aspiration. And we need to have also strong Pan-African scholarship, strong Pan-African scholarship institutions in the in different parts of Africa where we have place for future African scientists, future African innovators, future African leaders with Pan-African modality can be created and produced for the best uh, future of Africa. And harmonization of accreditation system across African universities is another serious issue that I would like to address. We need to harmonize the curriculum, the qualification standards, the accreditation system, so that we can have you know, student mobility across the continent and the staff mobility across the continent. Professors, students can move from one corner of Africa to another freely and then continue their education wherever they are. Just like the European Union's Erasmus Mundus. The Erasmus Mundus program, student, can move around any part of Europe and do his or her study. Can start here and finish there and so on. So this will create a way for integrated Africa and for development of Pan-Africanism identity. Uh, and another uh, important uh, priority uh, that I'd like again to focus on would be establishing globally leading centers of excellence, centers of excellence, research centers, centers of excellence, especially on the uh, comparative advantage of Africa, the areas where we Africans uniquely possess and have. So we need to have leading, globally leading, not continentally, leading, globally leading centers of excellence where Scholars from the rest of the world can come and do research and, you know, develop knowledge and share knowledge and cherish Africa for that. Like, for example, we, we say we are origin of humankind. All the seven billion of global population has emerged from here, from East Africa. But then we don't even have single center of excellence in archaeology or paleontology. Now then we have cultural diversity, but you know, so we have to look into what we have, what our comparative advantage, and then build very strong, vibrant, globally leading centers of excellence. And forging equity is another thing that I'd like to dwell on. Beyond rhetoric, beyond rhetoric, we need to act on gender equity and equality, social equity. 
when I was a minister of science and higher education, I have initiated serious reform program. Of course, a number of initiatives. Among them, one, one was uh, uh, for equity. The uh, higher education landscape, we used to have 100% male presidents, uh, you know, for all government universities. 100% male, men president. That's not fair, that's not right. Something is wrong. Because our students are from, you know, both boys and female. Our staff are both men and men, women. So I have initiated to amend the leadership recruitment directive of higher education in Ethiopia and uh, reinforce that every institution, every university need to have, needs to have at least two women in the top management system. And guess what now? We have two women presidents, Megale and uh, Rida and closer to 30 women vice presidents on the landscape. Also students and researchers, scientists, female scientists, female researchers have also, you know, uh, increased from day to day because we've been doing a lot. And I have a track record experience of making a difference in that line. And of course, on the others that are will come uh, now. Uh, well, why do I think that I'm the perfect fit? position and I have to say a few things on this. Well, I have, I can say, I have to be bold, <laughs> I'm sorry. I have been blessed to have collections of excellent qualities, experiences, practical experiences, qualifications, exposures that takes to lead, that, that can enable me to lead this commission. Talents. As uh, His Excellency uh, Ato Demek, uh, uh, Deputy Prime Minister, already mentioned it earlier, because he was my minister when I was at Addis Ababa University, Vice President, he was our minister. I think that connection helped me in a way to <laughs> get a position up the government landscape as a minister, because he knew me very well. So I have spent my life so far, breaking invisible glass ceilings and collecting firsts, so many firsts, number of firsts. <laughs> I mean, in both the leadership line and the scientific and research line, you know, and in academic uh, uh, life and, on, and others as well. So, I've spent a good part of my life at Addis Ababa University, the premier flagship institution, higher education institution of Ethiopia, the first and the biggest, the oldest institution. 25 years as teacher, instructor, researcher, leader, change maker. I practiced, exercised leadership right down from the smallest academic unit of the university, because I was the first woman department head of the Department of Linguistics and Philology. And then I was the first associate vice president, again, pioneering as a woman for academic affairs. And then I was the first vice president in the history of 70-something years of this institution. I was the one who broke the city. So I have a strong academic background in addition to this leadership because I was teaching, advising, and publishing also as a scientist, as a researcher. I had a number of international research projects with NORAD, with CEDA, and, you know, DRD and so on, and Alexander and Humboldt. So I get the chance to publish over 35 peer-reviewed articles in the international journals and one book as well. While doing leadership, you know, simultaneously, as it was said, multitasked woman. Being a mother and a wife, scientist and publishing, and leading a 
at a vice president position. You have no idea what it means, the pressure, the burden, the stereotype. Yeah, but I'm a fearless woman, a bold woman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I made it to the top in both lines, in all lines, I can say. In the research, I said, because I published, I was promoted you know, from lecturer to assistant professor. And then to associate, when I got promoted to associate pro professorship, I, there was, I mean, there was a rule. It says if you produce double number of publications, double number of publications than required, you can get associate professor rank by half the duration of your service. Then I found out that I have already got them and I applied, you know, with acceleration modality. Got associate professorship and then full professorship, the only and still one full professor woman in the area of social science and humanities. I did extensive field works, even the remote areas in Surma and, you know, in Europe, Kunama, you know, places where people don't dare to go. I did field works, research, published, and so on. And I've been recognized by Ethiopian Science Academy as, you know, duly recruited fellow of Ethiopian Science Academy. And I've been awarded by Alexander Humboldt, Germany, because I studied actually my PhD there, uh, as a senior scientist, senior scientist award from Germany. It's very prestigious. Excellencies, I need your support. I need you to vote for me. Of course, uh, along the way, this recruitment process, as you know, it was very tough, very rigorous, lots of candidates that I had to go through. Interviews, panels, group discussions, psychometric tests to get shortlisted. I'm the highest ranking female candidate for the sport of all your way.